Britain is brimming with hoarders. In these boxes? I have no idea. There's the body in here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Their collecting is catastrophic. <laughs> and they're drowning under clutter. Wow. But help is at hand. I do. I need a lot of help. <laughs> Collectibles expert Curtis Dowling will work out what is worth cashing in. They're selling for hundreds, if not thousands, of pounds. Excellent. Make me an offer. While Queens of Clean, Joanna Riley and Marianne Kamak will sort out what to keep and what to chuck. Anything would be a little better than what we have here. I think I'm gonna have to be quite firm. Clearing rooms for the first time in years. Now that's better, isn't it? This is fabulous. No one said it would be easy. I am petrified. So can our hoarders bear to part with their possessions? Just be gentle with it. And reclaim their homes for good. Ten years worth of piling up. Today, our experts deal with an overwhelming clothes collection that's hit the ceiling. I don't know where to start when it comes to this, besides maybe just putting a skip outside. And they're in a house swamped in hand-me-downs. Well, I think he's just like a junkyard. <laughs> there are major clean-up operations ahead. Blimey. That's a lot of vacuum cleaners. We've just got shelves and boxes everywhere. Today, our experts have their hands full with two cluttered housefuls. They'll be in South Yorkshire helping Duncan and Michaela with their excessive hoard of hand-me-downs and DIY gear. You're going to tell me off, are you? I clearly am, Duncan. <laughs> but first, they're off to Hampshire to meet Texan-born Christina, who hoards clothes. Sunday Easter hat, you know, prim and proper. Lots and lots of clothes. Oh, goodness. Can't even see the floor. <laughs> Some of her wardrobe even dates from Christina's teenage high school days. Oh, a lot of memories on this rack. Seniors 89. Gosh, this shirt's decades old. Um... <laughs> now her house is drowning under garments and she's desperate to get some order. I do have some of them semi-organized. They're mainly kept in a big pile and the pile just keeps getting bigger. Ah, I see. So not organized, really. I just throw it in and shut the door. But because she's often unwell, she can't tackle this on her own. I don't know where to start when it comes to this, besides maybe just putting a skip outside. Hold your horses, Christina. Our experts are on the way. <laughs> Professional housekeeper Marianne likes things shipshape, and antique specialist Curtis can spot treasures to sell. Hi. Hello. Hi, Christina. How are you? Together, they'll try to help Christina clean up two spare bedrooms and hopefully pocket some cash. And they soon discover it's pandemonium in here. Oh, just close. I have got my work cut out here. Maybe I'll speak to Christina about this. So far, they're just swimming through clothes. But Curtis has spotted some retro furniture under a messy heap in Christina's bedroom. This dresser in the corner. Mm -hmm. Is this something you want to get rid of? Yes. I was told it was some kind of antique-style dresser of some sort, but it's really not practical. What we have is a fairly well-made piece of utility furniture that's probably something like 40 to 50 years old. It's mm -hmm. saleable. I think if I can get you 30-odd pounds upwards... Yeah, I think that would be great. OK, I'm going to take it away. OK. I'll get you the best price I can, but I very much doubt that figure is going to be three digits. No. I think it's going to be two digits. Two digits is better than no digits. It's funky, it's retro, but it's not an awful lot of money. Christina's hoard has piled up over the years, but illness means she's often unable to deal with it. One of the big barriers I have is because of my medical condition, which is endometriosis. 
I can't move, I'm in pain and agony. It really is very life debilitating. So I have good days and bad days. And on the good days, I can clear out some stuff. And on the bad days, I, I can't even move. With two spare bedrooms in complete chaos, it's up to Marianne to work out what Christina's willing to chuck. Do you wear all of these clothes? Um, I have, at least once. <laughs> Looking at all of this, would you say you want to keep some of these clothes? I need to let a lot go. Right, so, and you want to sell them or they're going to go to a charity? Um, if they're good enough to sell, I will sell them. And if they're... I've, I've divided them up in three piles, basically. Where are those piles? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the whole room. <laughs> I can see. But Marianne does find some organisation. Some of them you've already got in bags, haven't you? Correct, yeah. And I did try to... When I've packed them, I usually, in the past, have tried to separate them. Are these prepared to go, then, or you want to go through them first? Oh, I'll probably want to go through them, and then I'll want to keep half, and... <laughs> but at least the other half is going out. <laughs> True, but you've got to basically let some of it go in order to get some space in here to make it the guest bedroom that you want. Yeah. We'll go and get some boxes. OK. Time to get stuck in. This is stuff that I'm really not needing because it's, well, summertime. Yeah. They can actually be put maybe in the loft or something. I think that can go into the charity box. Yeah. These could be charity things. Christina is such a lovely, kind-hearted person. She hasn't been well, bless her. But she wants to just get rid of it. And with Christina being really cooperative with the whole thing, it just makes my life easy. Hey, and there's a clean space. Yeah. And you've got more room to be able to perhaps put your wardrobe and things. That would be so nice. But there's a long way to go yet. And Curtis's search for valuables amongst the copious amounts of clothes hasn't been going too well. Maybe there's a few hidden treasures up here. It's just more clothes. I'm struggling. There is so little here for me to take away and sell. I'm really worried about the amount of money I'm going to be able to get for her. But there is one standout item of clothing that could make Christina money if she's prepared to sell it. Christina? Yes? Do you want to talk me through this um, wedding dress? <laughs> The miles and miles of wedding dress. Oh, yes, and the long and long divorce. Wow. <laughs> so, yes, it is, I would love for this to go. Oh, so you're happy for me to sell this? Very much so. It was the best thing of my wedding, because I got the dress I wanted, but unfortunately not the marriage I wanted. I really like the bow on the back. It's so cute. What was this costing when you bought it? It was over 2000 was the retail pricing. I don't, I'm not sure what the second-hand market price of it would be. Designer wedding dresses can have good value if they're antique or vintage, but this one is only 15 years old, so could be tricky to sell. So if I came back and said, here's £250 for this wedding dress, you'd say... Let's pack it up. Great. Let's try and get the most we possibly can. Let's find a bride who wants a... 12-foot train on her wedding dress. And look like a princess. And look like a princess. Right, I'm going to go and take this downstairs so I can <laughs> take it away. I shall leave you to it. And Curtis also has good news about some other potential gems. Christina's got some jewellery that she thinks could be valuable, but it's not here in the house. I need to find a way of getting it in my hands because that could really make the difference to how much she gets at the end of the day. And at the end of his route around, Curtis has some rather eclectic things to take away. You know, just talking to her, I don't think she's got any expectations about money. If that house can be cleared and we can give her a few pounds, I think we've got a happy Christina, you know. <laughs> Marianne's staying put to continue the clear out. Good luck. See you later, Curtis. But Curtis has some selling to do. Top of the list is Christina's designer bridal gown. I've got Christina's wedding dress here, and I'm in Greenwich, where I was born, to come and see Elizabeth. Now, she sells second-hand wedding dresses, so I'm hoping she might want mine. 
Mm. It has a very American style. It's mm. a, an American, quite well-known label for the era, Mary Bridal. Expensive? I think it would have been very expensive. It's in the couture range. It's a smart, beautiful thing of its time. Unfortunately, things change. Mm. At 15 years old, it's not current or vintage. If you buy a dress that, say, from the 1930s or 40s, you're already investing in a classic piece. It's already got the age and the beauty to it. It's, it's really never going to date, only gain value. Everything is timing, yeah. and this dress's time is just not now. Elizabeth isn't tempted to buy, but she does suggest ringing film and television costume companies or giving it to a dress upcycler or fashion student. But there's also a huge second-hand wedding dress market online. It might take patience waiting for a buyer, but at least it could recoup some cash. But Christina isn't the only one calling SOS. Meet Duncan and Michaela in South Yorkshire. Their house is brimming with hand-me-downs and jumble they just can't throw away. Well, I think he's just like a junkyard. <laughs> it's pretty uh, cluttered. It is <laughs> pretty, pretty cluttered. cluttered. Yeah. <laughs> I go to paint other people's houses and I think, why ain't my house like this? Maybe it's because when it comes to getting rid, it's too easy to get distracted. <laughs> You're not throwing that, are you? <laughs> Anyone for tea? <laughs> Where's my cane? <laughs> Duncan and Michaela have reached the point of no return. I'm actually getting to the stage where I think, this is silly. <laughs> We're going to do something, aren't we? Yes. 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 But this determined team of two can't fight the battle alone. There are two guest bedrooms in complete chaos. So Curtis is joining their mission to clear out and cash in starting the hunt for treasure atop the house with a set of golf clubs that belonged to Duncan's late father. Was he a good golfer? He, he tried an awful lot. I don't think he was ever what we would call a pro. Right, OK. <laughs> Duncan's dad played in RAF golf clubs in the 1950s, but Duncan thinks some of the clubs could date from the 30s or 40s. What I want to do is speak to a specialist and see exactly what they think, because to me, they look like there could be some reasonable ones here and some reasonable money. Right. Is there a bottom line where you say, do you know what, if it's £30, I'm not getting rid of them? I was going to say if it was £30 for all the lot, then I would probably say no. If they all came to 100 150 So let's say our target figure is £150. It's marvellous. Great. Right, I'll take them away. I don't know a lot about golf, but I do know about vintage. And those golf clubs are 70 or 80 years old, so I think they're going to make OK money. I've just got to find a specialist who can help me. Still to come, Duncan surprises Curtis. What'd you pay for it? About 65, 70 pounds, I think. A, a car boot sale? Yes. Unusual, isn't it? And Marianne has some advice for Christina. Listen to the expert here. All right. Get rid of a few, keep a few. In Hampshire, Marianne has been helping clothes hoarder Christina get sorted. Do you wear all of these clothes? I have, at least once. <laughs> and in South Yorkshire, Curtis has been getting in the swing of things at Duncan and Michaela's. They're desperate to create space in a house full of hand-me-downs. So let's say our target figure is £150. It's marvellous. At Duncan and Michaela's, Curtis is having a good route around to look for saleable treasures. Boarded chest, blanket box, probably late Victorian and very fashionable. So there's some money in these. Hmm, they're nice. Downstairs, Curtis has uncovered an unusual collection of cleaning apparatus. Blimey, that's a lot of vacuum cleaners. It is. Instead of carrying one vacuum cleaner upstairs, I like to have one downstairs and one up. But yeah. there's seven or eight here. Yeah, but I never use these two Kirby ones. Right. Why two Hoovers, just out of interest? One comes from my mum's and the other one comes from my husband's mum's. These American-made vacuum cleaners have been manufactured for over a century. They're usually sold by in-home demonstrators as high-end desirables. 
These ones might look worn out, but if they're mechanically sound, they could be worth something after a scrub up. Do they work? They do. And you've had them tested and serviced relatively recently? Yeah. Brand new, very expensive. There's something quite cool and retro about them now, isn't there? They need a clean up, that's for sure. Any idea what you want for them? Roughly about £100 each, something like that. We're looking at £100 each from them. <laughs> With any luck, the two vacuums will clean up money wise too. This is one of the most interesting houses I've walked into in ages because there's lots of fascinating things. And also, they want to get rid of everything. And that's making my job really simple. Back in Hampshire, and Marianne's been tackling Christina's humongous clothes hoard. You've got to basically let some of it go in order to get some space in here to make it the guest bedroom that you want. Yeah. They've started in the spare bedroom upstairs, but next on the to-do list is Christina's crammed spare bedroom come office downstairs. You've just got shelves and boxes everywhere. Yes. What's going on here? Um, it's supposed to be an office, and it's much more of a storeroom at the moment, which isn't what I want. Right. I'm just trying to get my head round this. Basically, what I'm seeing here is just boxes. So, clearly, a lot of this is for... Charity. It's gonna That's go great. It's going to go to charity. With so much boxed up, Marianne's job is made easier. It's now all about getting the boxes out of the room and house for good. <laughs> it looks really chaotic, but... In the scheme of things, it's quite easy for me. So we can start by taking this out, can't we? Yeah. I'll okay, do it, my... don't worry. Okay. You can grab that one. <laughs> With a bit of support, Christina's vision for the room is getting closer to reality. Right, what else are we going to grab? Oh, I think the ski costume would make a really good donation for charity. Yep, yeah, and the hats. Marianne and Christina are going great guns. Listen to the expert here. All right. Get rid of a few, keep a few. And the clear-out's well and truly started. There, I grabbed this. <laughs> Marianne hopes Christina can continue without her. Back in South Yorkshire, and Duncan hopes Curtis can turn something of sentimental value into cold, hard cash, a lover's lamp. We've not had it turned on for a while, but it should work. <laughs> right, it should do. <laughs> Uh, we got, bought it from the car boot shortly after we got married and saw it in the car boot sale and thought, that's nice. What'd you pay for it? Uh, it's about £65, £70, pounds, I think. A, a car boot sale? Yes. Unusual, isn't it? <laughs> Blimey! <laughs> and Curtis is worried he won't be able to get Duncan's money back for one simple reason. So it's fairly modern, and there's two ways we know that. One, by looking at it, and yeah. secondly, it says so on the bottom. Yes. So it was produced 2001. Right. So when you bought it... It was probably about two years old. If you walked into a department store and saw this, you're right, it would be 70, 80, 90, 100 pounds. Yeah. If someone's buying it trade price, they need to make a profit. So are you happy to get rid of it if we can get somewhere between 20 and 60 pounds? That's be fine. Good. Curtis will do what he can for Duncan and Michaela. But with so much clutter to clear, more help is needed. So Marianne's here to lend a hand. First stop, the guest bedroom that's too jam-packed for guests. And this has got quite a lot of clutter in it, hasn't it? It has, yeah. What's with the wardrobes? These have all been collected. We, we can manage to get rid of some of the wardrobes. Mm. That'll be a lot easier. And is it the same in all the others as well, clothes? There's a trouser press in there. And you, I see you've got a box of tapes up there, some rugs and things folded up. When I try and tidy up, it's like, I'll just put that in there. Out the way, thinking you're never going to see it again, but it's there. The clothes can go to a car boot. Yeah. What doesn't get sold there can then go to the charity shop. And you say you want to get your dress clean, we can take that. Yep. While the clear-out continues, Curtis has finished rummaging and has loads of things he thinks he can sell for a decent sum, including the vintage furniture he spotted earlier. So, I spoke to Duncan about those two chests in the bedroom upstairs. He's happy to sell them. They're not going to make big money, but they'll add a bit to the pot, that's for sure. There is years and years of clutter in there. Mm. But 
I think we're going to do all right. Good. And you, did you find anything? Fascinating. This is great for me because there's lots of really interesting things here. And I'm going to make some phone calls and see if I can make some money for them. Great. Good Helena. luck. Curtis has headed for the busy Barrows Market in Glasgow and hopes trader Roz will take a shine to Duncan and Michaela's lover's lamp. Now, this, Roz, might be right up your street. I love the shade. shade the shade bread. sells it. Yeah. The shade sells that one, but I love it. Depends on the price. So what do you think you'd want to pay for it? I'd offer you around about 35 for it. I couldn't go much higher than that, cos I know what I'm going to sell it for. OK. I think 35 yeah. quid is, is the right price for this. Right. So I'll shake hands with you on 35 quid. Shake hands on 35. God, your fingers are cold. <laughs> cold hands, warm heart, Curtis. Roz has fallen for the lover's lamp after all. She paid slightly more than I thought I was going to get. I think that was a really good deal for both sides. It's a decent amount to get the couple's cash back started, and there's still plenty more for Curtis to sell. Still to come, Marianne gives Duncan what for. What is going on in here? Uh, I think it's become a dump at sight. <laughs> Clearly it has. <laughs> but there's a more pleasant surprise for Curtis. Voila. Uh, voila indeed, madam. This is a completely different room. In South Yorkshire, antiques expert Curtis and professional housekeeper Marianne have been helping Duncan and Michaela. Their house full of hand-me-downs and jumble is creating absolute mayhem. The clothes can go to a car boot. Yeah. What doesn't get sold there can then go to the charity shop. And Hampshire clothes hoarder Christina's saying, I do, to selling something old. So if I came back and said, here's £250 for this wedding dress, you'd say... Let's pack it up. Curtis now has his hands on Christina's jewellery and is testing the market. So since I've seen Christina, she's dug out some of her jewellery. Now, there was quite a lot of it, but I've got two choice pieces that I'm going to take into Steve in Croydon Market to see if he's interested. Steve, a couple of bits for you to look at. Small necklace. Looks like a dragonfly. It's a dragonfly, yeah. And a little brooch. The necklace and brooch will at the very least be worth the value of silver. But what does Steve think? Um, you know, they're pretty pieces. For me, personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy them. Not your thing. Price-wise, as a second-hand piece, it's worth around £25. Yeah. Silver content, and it's a nice item of jewellery. Pretty little thing. And the brooch? 20 quid, 25. Again, it wouldn't be something I would buy, but I would say okay. that, you know, the, the lady should sell privately. It's a nice piece. It'd be a shame to melt it for the, uh, just for the silver content. It's a no sale, but the pieces do have value. And along with Christina's wedding dress, the jewellery will be listed for sale online. In Hampshire, Curtis and Marianne kick-started the clear-out of Christina's massive hoard. Now she's continuing on her own, starting in a spare bedroom choked up with clothes. OK. Bag for charity, bag for sell, and... Oh, good. Bag for rubbish. The task, I feel, is a bit daunting to get rid of everything, but it needs to be done. It's time. I don't know if I'd ever wear this, and I think I've got about three of them. So I think this one is going to go into the charity bag. And she's off, albeit a tad slowly. Most people keep hold of around a grand's worth of clothes they haven't worn in over a year, or even ever. It's even got the tag on, never been worn. Christina's organising her clothes into keep, charity and resale because selling your old clothes is one of the easiest ways to make a fast buck. The clothing resale market is worth billions of pounds that Christina can tap into. Still good. Who knows, might make a quid or two. American size two. Yeah, don't think that's happening. <laughs> Before long, Christina picks up the pace. Well, 
bag's getting a bit full, which is a good thing. Christina's making headway, but there's a Curtis matter to sort out. The retro dressing table he wants to sell was hemmed in under a mountain of clothes, and now an auction house has agreed to sell it. It's time to chat to Curtis. So have you cleared that dresser off of all them clothes yet? Um, yes, I've cleared it, and I also got it downstairs, and it is all ready to go. Good news. An auction is having a look at your dresser and thinks it's probably worth 20 to 30 pounds. Okay. Well, that's better than nothing. It is, and it's one more thing out of that bedroom, isn't it? Uh, yes, definitely. Okay, that sounds good. All righty. Nice to talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye now. It's great news for Christina, and the dressing table's getting picked up today. At Duncan and Michaela's in South Yorkshire, Marianne's turning her attention to another messy guest bedroom. Another wardrobe. This time, it's chocker with DIY materials. Wood chip. My grandma used to have that on the wall. I think I'll go and find Duncan. <laughs> With all this gubbins lying around, it seems Duncan's got some explaining to do. You're going to tell me off, are you, now? I clearly am, <laughs> Duncan. <laughs> what is going on in here? Uh, I think it's become a dump at sight. <laughs> clearly it has. <laughs> My intention is to sort out the tools, get the ones out of the way that I don't require. Right. The rest of them, I'm going to have to try and find some suitable home for them. A shed so, is the obvious place. Yes. Not the bedroom. What do you want to do with the room? The room itself I want to turn into a bed-sitting room. And I was going to put the foot on bed that we've had for the last ten years. Oh! Up. And really? Put it on that. <laughs> ten years you've had the foot on bed. <laughs> yes. It's still in its box. I can see. <laughs> Let's get a few things picked up yeah. and we can make a start. Right, OK. And um, take some things out. Come yeah. on, sunshine. I'm bored. <laughs> it's, all too, it's all too easy to get bored and distracted with the hard graft of a clear-out. Duncan has got to change his attitude if this is going to work. While Marianne tries to get Duncan on the right path, Curtis is having a bit more success in Glasgow. Now, this is Michaela and Duncan's boarded chest. I'm going in to see Norman. Now, he upcycles furniture. If I can't sell him this to paint, I might as well pack up. All this kind of stuff now painted up is the height of fashion, isn't it? Yes. Um, this one, I would reckon, um, would get done in the black finish. And you get a good result with that finish on something like this. And do you think something like this would sell fairly quickly? This is something my regular clients will be in and this will be gone. Right. So I'm really keen on this. I think it's a fabulous piece. How much is this? Going to cost you? Well, after what you said, it could be thousands now, couldn't it, to be <laughs> honest? Uh, £30, you happy with that? That's the one. Thank you, Curtis. No, that's marvellous. Good. I'm pleased it's gone and I think the people that are selling it will be delighted too. It's a sale. And Curtis is on fire as another trader buys the couple's dark wooden chest. Also for £30. Marvellous. Bringing the total up to £95. Back in South Yorkshire and powerhouse Marianne's actually having a sit down. But only because the dining room table needs some discussion before she leaves. It's stacked high with random clutter and mail. You've got numerous piles of Paperwork. papers here and it looks like, you know, they haven't been opened. Open. When you have your post, open them, bin what you don't need, yeah. put into the file what you need to keep, what you need to action. Perhaps yeah. you could just have a little clipboard where you can pin up your bills and things that you need to address within that week or month. Yeah. So that would be a great start. Clearing this small space will have a big impact. Duncan and Michaela can stop having dinner on their laps and finally sit at the table. It's been all go today, but with Marianne's encouragement, Duncan and Michaela are ready to roll up their sleeves and get rid of a ton of clutter. Time will tell if they can keep the momentum going without Marianne. 
I've really warmed to Duncan and Makala. They're going to enjoy clearing that space. Then they'll be able to have people over to stay. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed for them. Back in Hampshire, and it's all go at Christina's. The auction house have come to pick up the dressing table. It looks like the dresser has some value, 20 to 30 pounds. But hey, that's better than nothing. And it can go away. So that makes me very happy. But with box upon box of keepsakes and paperwork to sort through, Christina's got loads more to get rid of. Why do I buy these things? Part of my old military uniform. Trip to Minneapolis, picture book. German tax laws from 2001. Wait, German tax laws from 2001? A classic and excellent bedtime reading, I'd say. The day has stirred up more than memories. <laughs> but Christina's sorted through heaps of paperwork and mementos dating back over 15 years. I think my recycling bin is going to be very full this week. Better a full recycling bin than an overstuffed house, Christina. But now she's cleared paperwork, clothes, furniture and rubbish out of her house forever. I'm happy that quite a bit of it is now away. I know there's still much more to do, but at least it's a good start. I'm really looking forward to sitting down, curling up and watching some telly and probably going through some more boxes of miscellaneous stuff. Four busy days later, and although Christina's been unwell, with some help along the way, change is definitely afoot. I've done so much on this room. I think it looks OK. I hope Chris is pleased with it. Oh, well, I better go check and make sure that cup of tea is ready for him. Good morning. Hi there. Come on in. Thanks very much. How are you? Pretty good. Let me show you what I've done. I'm following you. Follow me. First stop is the downstairs guest bedroom. Before, it was completely consumed with clothes and clutter. Now, it's a clear, welcoming space, and Christina has already had family and friends stay over. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, come on. Voila. Uh, voila, indeed, madam. This is a completely different room. It's coming along. I've given quite a bit to charity. Yeah. Quite a bit's gone to the dump. Good. And quite a bit is gone for a resale. How about the other room? The other room is tidier, but it's definitely still a work in progress. Well, come on then, show me this other room. Okay. If it's half as good, I'll still be impressed. Okay, here, Let's follow go. me. It's upstairs to the other spare bedroom. Before, Christina's mammoth clothes collection was stacked, racked and piled right up to the ceiling. Now, although it's not finished yet, hundreds of outfits have been cleared out and the whole room is better organised. Pardon the mess? Oh. oh, you know what? I was expecting the worst. I thought it was going to be rammed still, but it's not. It's a lot clearer. Uh, yeah, but once again, it is a work in progress, so... Are you going to uh, carry on? Yes, yes. I just need to keep shoveling stuff out. But you're, you're getting there, aren't you? That's the great thing. Yeah, step by step. Come on, then. Let's go and sit downstairs. Sounds After you. good. Yeah. So, the rooms have been cleared, the dressing table's off to auction, and there's still more to sell, like Christina's wedding dress and jewellery. Leave it with me. OK. And I'm sure in the coming days and weeks, they'll be gone and you'll get a few quid in the bank. Hey, that's always a plus. Now, let's just talk about your wedding dress. You know it's going to sell. I know you don't want it back in this house. Nope. So, rest assured... It needs to find a good home. It's going to find a good home. Christina's things are all live on the market and could bring in a potential cash for clutter total of over £200. Downstairs is looking lovely. Upstairs, well, that's work in progress. As for the money side, well... That's work in progress too. But you know what? There's going to be a happy ending. Money's still to come in, and Christina's got the decluttering bug. She's happy. 
at the end of the day, it's actually nice just to have space. I want people to come over and feel comfortable and enjoy themselves and not feel like they're sitting in a tip. <laughs> Still to come, Rookie Curtis is green on the green. You do know you're trying to putt with a driver. I didn't actually know. That's why I've come to see you, because I know nothing about golf and you're the expert. But everything's rosy in Yorkshire. This looks absolutely fabulous. Yeah. In South Yorkshire, our experts have been helping Duncan and Michaela sell off and chuck out roomfuls of hand-me-downs and junk. What is going on in here? Uh, I think it's become a dump at side. <laughs> Clearly it has. <laughs> and amongst the mess, Curtis has found treasures to sell. I think 35 yeah. quid is, is the right price for this. Right. So I'll shake hands with you shake on 35 hands on quid. 35. God, your fingers are cold. I... <laughs> Curtis is on a roll, but he still needs to get two vacuum cleaners off his hands. He's taking them to a specialist dealer, Ian. What are they? What do you think? Two 1990 machines. Right. Uh, How can you tell that's a 1990 machine? Serial number. I'm right in saying they are good, aren't they? They last over 100 years. So how much would these have cost in 1990? These were £799 each. That's a lot of money. Value? 30 to 50. Each? Yeah. Is this something you'd buy off me? Unfortunately, I've got over 100 machines in stock. What advice can I give to Michaela to actually sell them for herself? A day could have that machine, shiny and new. Yep. She'll double the price of the, the value of the machine. And she's going to put that on the internet, I assume? It's probably the cheapest way to, uh, to sell it nowadays. Price-wise, cleaned up? 75 to 100 pounds. No sale. But at least Curtis is armed with some good advice for Michaela and Duncan. Now there's only Duncan's dad's golf clubs remaining. Novice player Curtis has gone to Perth to get expert advice from golf club manager Neil. You do know you're trying to putt with a driver. I didn't actually know. That's why I've come to see you, because I know nothing about golf and you're the expert. Educate me, Neil. OK, let's have a look. Let's have a look what we have here. So this one here is a, a, an old uh, persimmon-headed wood. A lot of people, though, think that these are still hickory shafts. Antique hickory shaft clubs from around the turn of the 20th century can make well over £100 each. So what's the story with these? This actual club here looks like it's a hickory yep. shaft. Actually, this was made back in probably about the 1930s, 1940s. Oh. And what they did at that time, when they were moving from hickory into steel shafts, people didn't want metal shafts. So what they did is they took the metal shaft and put a plastic coating on the outside to make it look like it was still hickory. OK, so if I wanted to buy this club, what would I pay for it? Maybe up to £20. It's a, a nice looking club yeah. and something that you could uh, you could have up on a display wall. But as, a, as an old artefact golf club, unfortunately, there's no real value in that. And sadly, it's the same for the rest of the collection. But Curtis is determined to pitch them to dealer George. For these two, I'd maybe let you have about £10. The rest, I think, are worth about a pound each. I might save myself for another day. Right. Or I might take it up myself, you never know. Look, I'm starting to feel like a golfer already. It's too low, so the clubs are going back to Duncan. Back in South Yorkshire, Duncan's busy turning the DIY dumping ground back into a spare bedroom. Get some stuff boxed up and bagged. See if we can see some floor at the end of it. But it's, it's about time we got cracking on it, I think. Wondered where the other chess pieces had gone. <laughs> That'll be a complete chess set again. And in the other spare bedroom, Michaela's also determined to make space so family and friends can stay over. Gardening gloves. <laughs> That's going to a charity shop. Be ruthless. Just get rid of it. The more you get rid of it, it the more it'll help you to, like, get on with your other house chores and stuff like that. 
think I think she'd have liked it to have been cleared and gone within a couple of days. But I have a feeling it's probably going to take quite a while. <laughs> Joining forces might speed things up. All right, what are we doing first? I think we're working really well as a team today. We've got more energy, we've got more confidence to, to let things go. I can see a floor now. Everything's going to plan, everything's getting sorted out, and I'm really ecstatic, and I'll probably end up bursting to tears at the end. Please don't do that, Michaela. Now, there's nothing quite like moving a heavy piece of furniture to test a relationship. That's it. Turn round, turn. It's your that's... You need to turn yours. Yeah, I know. You're going too fast. Come on. Watch my fingers. You're going near the door. They've made it. Now some nitty-gritty sorting out. Rubbish. No, I have one my craft box. I'll keep them, cos I like listening to 60s music. Are you were supposed to be chucking stuff away, yeah? Yeah, I know. Irish whistle book. Oh, dear me. Do you remember that? Yeah, the one you brought your Irish whistle. You keeping that or throwing it? Of course we're keeping it. It's a family heirloom. Are you sure? Yes. That's one box sorted out. Despite the bickering, they've definitely got the hang of this decluttering lark. I think letting go will give me a, a boost to say, no more clutter in the house, no more hoarding, just get on with it. They've done an incredible job. And ten big boxes and bags, as well as larger household items, are heading off for selling and the tip. I'll not be hoarding anymore. No, this is the end. This is the end of it. <laughs> Bye. Bye! Six weeks later and Duncan and Michaela are expecting a special visit. I'm just waiting for Curtis to arrive. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I just can't wait to show him. We've done loads more to the house. He's going to be shocked. I'm back to see Duncan and Michaela. Now, last time I was here, they had a lot of clutter and they had some really interesting things, but interesting doesn't mean that they're very, very expensive. So I'm going to get in there, have a look what they've done and tell them the good news about how much money I've made. First stop, the first spare bedroom. Before, it was a dumping ground for Duncan's DIY and decorating equipment. Now it's a welcoming guest bedroom that's actually been decorated. The brand new sofa bed that stood redundant in its box for 10 years has finally found its true vocation. And all those messy tools are where they should be, stored away. Right, let's see this room. Yep. Blimey, this is astounding. Yeah. This I'm, I'm really pleased with it. And I can see that man in the corner's really pleased with it because yeah. that's where you've been hiding. I wonder why you weren't coming up the stairs with us. This looks absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Take a seat on the sofa. Mikhail is enjoying having guests round at last. Well, look yeah. at that. Sofa bed, obviously. Yes. Sofa bed, yeah. Do you know the funny thing is, you've got rid of lots of stuff, but hidden away was all this really useful stuff yeah but actually now you've got a bit of space we're actually using yeah. actually using for yeah. a change because yeah. this is must have, this was in the box forever wasn't it it yeah. was yeah i'm amazed honestly yeah. show me another room yeah. fantastic before duncan and michaela's other bomb site of a spare bedroom was overstuffed with wardrobes clothes and clutter now it's much clearer. The majority of their hoard has gone, creating much needed space. Oh, now that's a lot clearer. Yeah. Look at that, there's space. Yeah, there is, yeah. We've done loads of tip runs, it's gone to charity. Uh, there's been about three bags full that's gone to cash for clothes. Oh, so you've not just dumped it in other rooms, oh, have you? Oh, no. It no, really okay. has been cleared out. It has, yeah. The couple plan to clear out even more Plus, sell two wardrobes, decorate, and put a double bed in. I mean, there's no stopping you, is there? No. Do you know what? Even I feel lighter walking around this house now. Good work. Yeah. After you, madam. Yeah. Isn't she doing well? 
Curtis has one more place to check out, the dining room. Before, it was impossible to sit down at the clutter and paper-strewn table. Now the mess has gone and there's a new table that belonged to Duncan's late grandmother. It's a good place to reveal how much money has been made so far on their declutter journey. We've managed to make you just shy of £125. And you've made some sales too, haven't you? I've shot one of my vacuum cleaners. Well, how much did you make out of that? £10. And you're off to do a boot fair. You're turning into little money-making machines. <laughs> do you feel better for it? Yes. A lot better. A lot better. Do you know what? I think you've done a cracking job. Duncan and Michaela's house just seems so much tidier, and they seem happier too. And since Curtis's visit, Duncan and Michaela's enthusiastic selling has continued. Adding their rewards to the money Curtis made, they now have a great cash for clutter total of £330, with plenty more still to sell. Cheers. Here's to your grandma and her table.